Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. This is a weighted socket, specifically a 19mm Ingersoll Rand power socket, most often bought for use on difficult to remove Honda crank bolts, but of course could be used on other things too. It's meant to increase the torque delivered from your impact wrench and basically put your tool on steroids. We've never tested this popular class of 19mm socket because our dyno rig's main test bolt is too large and beefy to fit one, which meant until now we could also not test this even more popular and affordable Lyle version, which has the same aim. But instead of a flywheel-like design, it's just a super thick boy using mass alone to hopefully pump things up. In order to test these and several other curious creations from today, we had our reverse thread class 12.9 normally one and a half inch hex drive test bolt custom made from scratch for us with an integrated 19 millimeter hex sticking out the head. This precise fit with small hex size but large threads will allow us to shoot for the moon torque wise. The problem with testing new 19 millimeter or three quarter inch head bolts is that they are easy to kill because a bolt can easily be 1000 foot pounds worth of rusted or stuck but new threads when testing them can't really be tightened to 1000 foot pounds at that size. So we're breaking this episode into four parts. Part one, testing these retail weighted sockets versus each other, then against increasing weight DIY creations to see if you can get the same performance for cheap at home, including blow torching some lead to make a super socket. Part two, with the surprising results from that, showing you the results with cordless impacts and testing the best of these on a different and more powerful impact to see how the results change, if at all. Part three, discussing our head scratching findings with a professor of physics and his explanation as to why this is all happening. Then finally, part four, putting that professor's theories to the test. Our first homebrew socket welded together by our friend Ryan is a long one inch hex nut that fits over a deep 19 millimeter socket. This costs $6.31 in materials, so it would be a pretty cheap way to hack your impact wrench. Let's see first how a deep impact socket does. Now keep in mind this dyno is not calibrated for these dual size concoction bolts. So we're just keeping things as they are and telling you their score and beans strictly for comparison's sake. We use air guns for this many tests to eliminate tool temperature and battery level variables. So 570 beans from the air macro gun in this reverse 10 second test. Here's the 1.1 pound hex nut DIY weighted socket in reverse as well. Six hundred and sixty nine. So already a great increase and all at the end where things are tightest, which makes sense. We notice you need some significant mass difference to make any noticeable change as we saw a shallow socket make 587, for example. So it's not always cut and dry by just adding any amount of weight. All right, time for some retail options. The $72 Ingersoll Rand power socket, which situates mass on a flywheel far out from its axis to achieve things theoretically. Let's see it. Eight hundred and one. We're seeing some massive changes on this smaller hex drive size. When we tested different sockets with our normal one and a half or thirty eight millimeter bolt heads and the sockets that uses on this dyno, we saw pretty much nothing. Okay, time for the ever popular Lyle, probably in part because it's $32, not $72. Let's see it. $802, for the most part, seemingly interchangeable with the power socket, despite each taking very different paths towards making this increase. It's frankly mystifying to me that these things aren't simply snake oil to begin with. But our own creations are still well down from a retail weighted socket, so let's add some more weight. We're going to skip ahead a smidge to a 1.58 pound socket that's heavier than the IR one. It's a 32 millimeter deep socket on the outside with a 19 millimeter deep impact socket welded on the inside. Driven from the 32 millimeter socket's end, this costs $13.69 to make. $6.50. 
689, so an improvement, but not the one we were looking for. If beating the IR and weight didn't do much because it's a flywheel design, let's beat the Lyle with this 2.57 pound creation from Ryan. That's a 19 millimeter deep socket, then one inch black pipe over that, then one and a quarter inch pipe, one and a half, and finally two inch pipe over the top. $20.71 plus a socket in total to make it. A hundred and three. All right, a DIY socket taking the top spot now with some nice gains on the curve too. Though we did accidentally overshoot the mark on this and it's a few millimeters too big in diameter to fit specifically into a Honda harmonic balancer hex. Oops. Let's keep things going though. 3.55 pounds worth of thick one inch inside diameter washers. $16 from the local hardware store. Let's see that. Six hundred and forty-six. Kind of piss poor in this group. Not really sure why one works and not the other. In order to truly address the more masses, more better argument side of things, we felt it would be a good idea and frankly just sort of cool to make a solid lead weighted socket. And seeing as we have a lot of old used wheel weights around here, that was an obvious source of materials, costing us nothing. The wheel weights do have steel clips on them, so you sort of have to go panning for gold by heating everything up and just extracting the heavy gooey goodness out of it. This socket shell has pin spokes welded throughout it to make sure that the lead tries to act as a single rigid body with the socket itself and not a loose passenger for efficient hammer transfers. Well, that's the theory at least. We're sort of in uncharted waters here in the name of science. This weighs in at around four and a half pounds, or more than twice what the thick Lyle weighted socket does. Really taking this principle to the max as anything heavier like tungsten would be probably brittle enough to just shatter apart. Let's see her shine. Six hundred and eighty-two. Womp womp womp. Even took a while to catch up to the deep socket here, so no shortcuts to the formula we're looking at. You have to find sort of the Goldilocks mass. Or do you? We skipped over one particular socket, a last roundup of unused materials from this project. A bit smaller in diameter, though similar size to the black pipe socket, but this one's hollow, only 1.54 pounds, so much lighter for it. Check this out. Eight hundred and thirty-two. Boy, did we think this was a fluke too, but it just kept making this. Or more. Eight hundred and thirty-two was its median, it made as much as eight hundred and fifty. And the outside welds on this handmade one again interfere with Honda's crank dimensions, so we need to tweak this and test that. It's more the general principles at hand here we're trying to test. As usual, these effects also apply to cordless impacts, which we were able to verify. But just to a bit lesser degree, we theorized due to each impact blow being less, well, impactful on cordless using a ball and spring cam mechanism versus an air tool whose whole mass completely stops with each blow, which is a more efficient transmission of that potential energy. About 10 to 15% less dramatic on cordless tools. We also noticed on low power impacts like on this knockoff Makita taking off this bolt, that it can make no difference or even make the tool slightly worse. So the more powerful an impact wrench is, the more it sort of bumps things up. 
Speaking of more power, let's use some of these interesting examples on the Thor impact wrench in shorter tests to see if there's a continuing of this trend under different conditions like you would see at home. And for a more relatable experience, we're going to now calibrate this in pounds foot from a wrench. And here you're going to see its baseline run of five seconds in reverse with a deep socket, which makes for 529 foot pounds with the new calibration. Let's do the IR power socket. Six hundred and fifteen. So even with a shorter test starting from zero and different air impact, we're seeing a noticeable increase in torque delivered to this bolt. Here's how the Lyle thick weighted socket compares. Six hundred twenty three. So again, fairly similar, but also again, edging out the more expensive power socket. Here's how our beefy lead filled socket did. So that's worse than the deep socket now in this test length, cementing that as just a bad idea, albeit a fun one, I think. And here's how that oddity of a hollow drum socket did in its tests. Six hundred and fifty seven again, the best of anything we've used. And this is just some cheap mild steel or black pipe welded with caps, a hollow inside making the difference here. The power socket is a complex flywheel design that's forged as one piece and its price reflects that. The Lyle even though this is all hardened chromoly material you're paying for just to add some weight. Obviously it's going to involve a TIG welding fixture or machine to pump these out but materials wise I felt this could be sold at an even more affordable price so I informed the team at Astro Tools of this design and results and they just brought prototypes of it to SEMA. But assuming it can save a guy a few bucks and bring some extra beans, I encourage them to make it and well, any of you brands out there with this info now, give it a shot too. No patent pending, none of us stand to benefit financially for anyone making this. But what's cool about the IR power socket design is it can sometimes, it has a thick wall, work on lug nuts. So I'm gonna work on and maybe test a few hollow designs that can also work on lug nuts as well. I think that would be cool. But while we may stumble into some awesome anomalies like this one here and there from doing well to make a testing rig that picks up this type of data and like a skid more in our experience, it doesn't mean any of us have the mental fortitude to explain why any of this is happening. Sure, we have theories about conservation of momentum, the effects of flywheel has at storing energy, etc. But we're mainly just pulling from a few things we sort of understand and trying to make those apply to what we see, regardless of if that's true. Like many of the armchair physicists we get in the comments section, but hey, me included in that bunch. So after several attempts to reach out and contact channels much smarter than us, like Veritasium and others, we did get in touch with a professor of physics, Dr. Bollock, with all of our data to try and shine some light on what's going on. For one, why can heavier sockets transmit impact blows more effectively? Two, why does this effect lessen and even disappear with heavier and super heavy sockets like the lead one? And three, why the heck does a hollow socket beat all of them across all the testing we've performed? And he had quite a few thoughts, but to sum up the relevant bits, one, heavier sockets do not result in more force applied as each impulse has to overcome the socket's inertia, soaking up and wasting kinetic energy and therefore more mass takes more force applied to create the same work. And number two, and more to the point, what we are instead seeing is likely heavier, thicker sockets are just more rigid. A rigid body transmits an impact force much more efficiently, and hollow shafts further are stronger than solid shafts, and the larger the diameter, the stronger, compounded by less mass to overcome. And that's why the hollow socket is doing best. Which all sounded pretty good to me, but I had one last thing bothering me then. What the heck is this flywheel on the power socket doing if not storing any potential energy? It adds mass, which the professor says is bad, yet adds no additional rigidity. So I asked Dr. Bollock this question, and it did conform to his explanation of forces at play, but we're more practical than theoretical type folks around here. I'm just gonna cut this flywheel off, leave the thicker and thus more rigid socket mass intact and see what happens. Less mass, so should be more oomph. And you'll have to excuse these standing in front of the dyno here like an idiot, but no funny business at play. 
536 foot-pounds right after throwing the untainted power socket on the dyno and confirming it made 615. So I provided these results to the professor and just sort of pointed at them with a question mark, at which time he said he would get back to me tomorrow, then ghosted me for a few months now. So does this make me a genius, possibly stumping a physicist? <laughs> no, we just sort of poke stuff with a stick here and record what happens. Might make for a cool tool that's useful for you guys, I think, but doesn't really mean we understand the factors at play and why. So hey, maybe hit up your favorite physics YouTube channels with this question in this video. We'd love to collaborate. In the meantime, we'll shoot some high-speed footage of these in case that shines some light on anything going on and share those additional data points. Appreciate you joining us on weird experiments such as this one. We make stuff like this at least every Friday. Thanks for watching.